Hi everyone, it's Don, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, today we have Carnival finally announcing lifting of almost all protocols. We have some stories coming out about some concerns in Australia, and uh, we have a bunch of ships that you can finally sail on here in North America. By the way, one of those ships coming to North America is the Rotterdam has returned and we're on her. Remember, this is the 150th celebration of the first transatlantic crossing from Amsterdam to New York. And we arrived today with much fanfare. All the dignitaries were here. We had the mayor, the governor, even the president flew down. Uh, no, no, no. Um, we, we kind of snuck in in the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there wasn't a whole lot of fanfare here this morning um, at all, but uh, we'll see what happens when we leave. Uh, that might be a completely different story. But some ships that are coming. How about the Celebrity Beyond that people have been clamoring to get on, but has only been sailing in the Mediterranean? Celebrity Beyond is coming here now. Also, the brand new Virgin ship is also coming to make two ships sailing in these waters, which is good. This is the time of year where ships start coming back from Europe. And a lot of people wait for this time of year because some of them have favorite ships and those are the only ones they want to sail on. Myself, I have favorite ships, but I'm still going to go on everything I possibly can. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's going on right now. A lot, a lot of ships are, are making moves right now, and it's a good, exciting time of year uh, when people see their favorite ships or brand new ships come into port, like the Celebrity Beyond. I was in her in, Jul in July. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous ship. You'll you'll absolutely be amazed at how, how good she is. So... Um, love that cruise. Carnival Cruise Line here in North America has finally announced that they're dropping protocols. Remember, we had Norwegian said they were dropping theirs. Then in late August, we had Royal Caribbean said they were dropping theirs. Princess Cruise Lines dropped theirs on uh, October 21st. And now Carnival is coming out saying that they are dropping basically all of their protocols on all sailings. Here it is, 15 nights or less. Anything over 15 nights, so a 16 night or more sailing, you'll still need to be uh, vaccinated and you'll still need to be updated with your boosters. However, uh, you will not have, you, you can still sail, but you have to apply for an exemption and you will have to provide uh, a test for everyone five years or older for within three days of your cruise. Um, so basically the same protocols as we've been having for over a year and a half now uh, of sailing. So, but everything on most sailings, the vast, vast majority sailings on Carnival are way less than 15 nights. So basically it's all open, except there are some conditions out there. For instance, uh, Grand Turk in the Turks and Caicos. You, if you are not vaccinated, you're not allowed to go to shore. Uh, Colombia, you're not allowed to go to shore. And of course, Bermuda still makes you pay that $40 if you want a travel visa to apply to go to Bermuda. They're not, they're not going to give that up too easy, I don't think, because that's a, a cash cow for them. Uh, millions of dollars just for having their regular passengers come which is a, a huge bonus. If that sticks, uh, imagine how many other possibility of places are going to do that. Scotland, believe it or not, already is thinking on doing that as well, charging a, a, a visitation fee of some sorts for all passengers arriving by cruise ship. No word if there's any arriving by air, but they're talking cruise ships, even though the vast, vast majority of people arriving arrive by air. Also, we have 
some scuttlebutt now in Australia as the Ovation of the Seas had reported that it had over uh, 130 cases, confirmed cases of COVID on board. And the protocol that they were following was five days of isolation on the cruise ship. And if they showed no symptoms after the five days, uh, they were allowed to go around the cabin. They like go around and visit the shore and all that. Um, and now they are saying in the New Zealand that no, no, you have to be seven days. Seven days is the quarantine period. But when the description came out for the rules, the rules did say five day mandatory. And if they were still showing signs, then they would have to stay in the room for day five and days, uh, day six and day seven. Well, I would think if you still have signs and you're still testing positive, you would probably still have to stay in your room until you don't test positive anymore. But uh, apparently Royal Caribbean reached out for clarification and now stated that from now on, all passengers who test positive on that cruise in Australia or any subsequent cruising will now be quarantining for seven days, not five days. And uh, yeah, that that's uh, going to cut into a lot of people's a lot of people's trips. We have people on board this, this sailing, not a whole lot, not definitely not 130, but some people have tested positive and had to isolate and quarantine in their room. But one thing I really don't understand about the quarantine rules, and this goes for everywhere, folks, is they no longer remove the people in the cabin with the person who tested positive. So for instance, a husband and wife are sailing and the husband tests positive and he has to quarantine for five days. Well, the wife is free to go, come and go and join in the entertainment, go to dinner and all these other things while staying in an enclosed cabin with the person who has COVID. Uh, well, uh, in a recent experience I just had with my n nephew, he came down with COVID and immediately in a whole house, his family members caught it. Well, <laughs> and he, he, you know, uh, so imagine if you're in a 200 square foot room for the rest of 15, five days, the odds of you catching it as well uh, are quite, quite large. And uh, But you do have to test. I think most cruise lines are every second day that person has to test. Some are every day. So they do have some precautions out there. I guess it's good if you're the person who didn't test positive. Um, but what do you like? I don't I don't know. It just seems kind of odd. Um, that's out there. I wonder if that's because they can now say, well, you know, you tested positive, so you get some money back, but your spouse doesn't because they were able to enjoy the rest of the cruise. <laughs> you wonder if it's a money thing. Because it certainly doesn't sound like a science thing. <laughs> and myself, I sail alone. So I don't, doesn't really bother me either way. Um, but it's going to be uh, interesting uh, to see what comes of this in Australia. Like there are a few ships out there now with over 100 cases because they are just opening up and they're reporting every single thing again. Here in North America, we're not reporting it anymore. We're just carrying on our daily routine. So it's not front and center in every news. It's not front and center on all the reporting, but right now it is like it was here when it first, when we first reopened. Remember all the stories? Huge outbreak on this ship, huge outbreak on that ship. That's what they're going through right now in Australia. But if they'll get it figured out, the good news is at least the ships are sailing once again. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation. And uh, stay tuned to see what kind of big celebration they do here in New York City when we pull out tomorrow evening.